Good morning, it's Mark at Top Local Lead Generation in Vancouver. We're here with Mr. Bernie Pollock of Pollock Automotive, Vancouver's 15 time winners of best auto repair in Vancouver as voted by their customers. How are you doing today, Bernie? Really good. So we're gonna talk about a subject that's unfortunately near and dear to my heart, um, VW TDIs and the um, massive fraud that's been perpetrated on 11 million customers worldwide um, and what can we do about it so what have you found out so far in your research Bernie well um, a couple of things but I wanted to put a question to you I know you, you own one of these vehicles so you're obviously uh, it's important to you what, what have you you said you have found out a couple of things what uh, what can you share with us you sure. talk a little quick and I understand sure so I, I called VW um, Actually, I was going to call a dealership, and VW has a intercept uh, phone number on there now. To, if you're calling about the TDI, click this number. So I did, and it of course goes to a a call center in, uh, I believe, in Montreal somewhere. And um, you know they have no answers. We're as in the dark as you are, sir. Was their final response? You know, no. Who knows? The, uh, further research turned up they have a web page where they basically go through all the different questions you might ask. What if they detune it and you know a few miles goes down? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know is the answers as of today, October 16th, 2015. So uh, it's been about a month. So it's not much progress as far as actual let's do something about this. That's what I found. Awesome. Well, I, I mean, I can speculate on a few ideas that Volkswagen has to fix it. Uh, and obviously, they're probably working hard somewhere. They just don't want to say anything until they come up with their strategy. But I mean, there's, I see they have really two options. One is to simply detune the engine to meet the uh, EPA emission standards, the emission standards they claim the vehicle is going to have. Cost of that, of course, is going to be a decreased gas mileage and engine performance. How much, it's hard to say, but it will definitely not be the same car that you were driving before. From Volkswagen's perspective, that's probably the cheapest way to do it. I mean, once they write, rewrite the software, which is probably not all that difficult, uh, it's simply a matter of driving into the dealer, plugging it in, they reprogram it, it's out the door in half an hour, and really the cost is pretty minimal to them. Uh, the other option, and the better one, I think, for consumers would be to put a urea system in this could be, I heard somewhere speculating about $5,000, and I, I don't really know. It could be more, it could be a bit less, but this would involve pretty extensive work. They'd have to obviously reprogram the vehicle as well to accept the system, but uh, there would have to be a, a tank put in the trunk, plumbing, um, electrical components, uh, exhaust system changed over to a different type of catalyst. So that would be a, a lot more work, probably you know a day's type of work uh, for each car. There's 11 million cars out there, that's a lot. Uh, and $5,000, I did a little rough calculation, that's $5.5 .5 billion, not to mention all the administrative costs and all the other things that are gonna occur. Um, for the consumer, I mean, the, the downside is you have to add some urea to your tank. It's not very expensive. I mean, it would probably cost you from, depending on how much you drive, 20, 20 to 50 bucks a year. It's really very minimal and probably the best option. But those, as from what I can tell, are probably the two best things, the two ways it's going to happen. So would the urea option impact the performance and the mileage? I don't believe so. I think uh, you'd probably be able to keep that intact, and uh, I don't. It's possible they might even find some improvements in mileage and and performance by adding that system, but um, which would actually be a nice little bonus for the consumer. But I, I wouldn't want to say it might just be the same as. Sure. So one of the things that I mentioned to you that I thought was well an, an immediate fix was let's just put it on biodiesel and you know that'll cure it. And so what what's the problem with that? Well, biodiesel uh, is definitely less polluting than petroleum diesel, but it still doesn't eliminate the NOx issue because NOx is created. It's a formation of of combustion temperature and pressure, and diesel has a lot of pressure and it has a lot of temperature, and that's why NOx is so high in diesel. So. NOx comes from the air. Basically, there's nitrogen in the air, there's oxygen in the air, and that's 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 uh, what happens. So, um, so diesel's 
diesel does, uh, you know, does create a lot of NOx. That's uh, the downside of it. But uh, the hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide emissions, I believe, would be decreased by, by using biodiesel from what I've from what I've read. Plus, it certainly smells a whole lot better too. Well, I've I've done it on previous cars, and it runs. They run. There's more power too, because um, the cetane rating is actually higher for for uh, biodiesel compared to petroleum, compared to dead dinosaur bone. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's, it's certainly an option. And what else? I mean, there. I guess there's other options. I, I don't know. I haven't researched it yet. I don't know if you have yet. But, you know, I know Mazda has a low compression diesel, 14 to 1 compression. Um, and I'm not sure what kind of system. They didn't even bring them into Canada. They are, I think they're in the United States, uh, certainly in other parts of the world. Um, I, don't, I, I have no idea what how they get that nitrous oxide or if it even makes as much nitrous oxide because the compression is so much lower. I don't know much about that diesel engine, but I would speculate that having that lower compression, there's, there's probably a few advantages. Uh, one would be lower NOx because of the, you know, the combustion pressure and temperatures would be lower. But I think the other reason they make the engine like that is they can make it lighter. You know, diesel has to be made pretty robust because it's pressures are so high that, you know, the engine could explode pretty easily. So they, Diesels tend to be a lot heavier than gasoline engines, so I think one of the reasons they went for that lower compression was the uh, was a lighter weight engine, which is more economical. You know, one other area you were mentioning to me, uh, you know, as an owner of a Volkswagen, and I've had a couple of people call about this type of thing. I mean, what do I do? Do I just get rid of the car? You know, and uh, I would just encourage you if you own one of these cars, it's not the sky isn't falling in. I mean, it's it's a bad thing that Volkswagen did, and and uh, I'm sure they'll come up with a solution, and they'll probably there'll certainly be some financial compensation, and it's going to be hard in the company. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have wanted to buy shares in the company before this happened. That would, would definitely be not a great scenario, but um, you know they'll they'll come up with a solution. I mean they'll be forced to, and they'll they'll do something to make it right. Uh, as far as the value of the cars, I, I did speak with a friend of mine who's an independent car dealer, and he said, well, you know, I might pay a little less for them, but I'm not overly concerned about it for the time being. So you know, there's probably a slight drop in value of the cars, but I don't think it's huge. And you know, if you're planning on keeping the car for the long term, which a lot of people who buy these cars are, I'd just say hang in there with it. Volkswagen will come up with a solution. I mean, it still drives. You still got the great mileage and power, and um, you know, you they will come up with an emission solution. So that's that, that's my thought. You know, it's a, it's a bit of a bad blip, but um, I'd say don't just get rid of the car right away. There's there's other solutions. There's, things will come. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my. As much as I'd like to have the problem go away, um, it's. It's funny how you are sort of proud about driving a car one day, you find out something and the next day it's the same car, drives the same way, and now I'm not so proud. <laughs> well, well, that's I mean, that's my problem, really. That's not Volkswagen's problem. Volkswagen's got to fix the car, and they will, Yeah. Um, one way or another. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, we get compensated as an owner from Volkswagen, from class action lawsuits by forcing them to pay people and uh, for their mistake, um, for their fraud, um, you know they're going to pay a lot of money. They really put the company at risk. So, yeah. stay the course. I think so. You know, I think just stay the course, and and uh, it'll it'll work its way. It'll work its way through. I mean, as, as you said, is but. It, it kind of brings me to the point with cars. There's a lot of reason why people people buy cars for different reasons, and a lot of people buy bought. I mean, most people bought the TDI Jetta for the economy. You know, it's got some performance, and it's it's good for the environment. I mean, not missing good, but it's the best one of the better options for uh, the environment as far as an automobile goes. So you know, when you you know, it's understandable you wouldn't feel so good about driving your car after you find out you know you've been it's like your spouse cheating on you it's like even if you've had a 20-year marriage and it's been fabulous it's like all of a sudden there's like something that's kind of in the way and it needs to be worked out so that's my yeah. that's not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. just get wait till get get it fixed up and then move on so one of the things that we'll do is we'll we'll collect up some um URLs. We'll put them in the below the in the comments on this, and and we'll share those on social media so other owners have resources to check. And I'm sure other people are kind of wondering what the heck's going on, uh, as am I. 
Um, so we'll try and share all that information. And if we find anything more, if there's other solutions, we'll check and share those. Uh, maybe we will revisit this in the future when Volkswagen comes up with their solution. I think, yeah, I think that makes sense. Once Volkswagen actually comes up with a plan, then we can uh, discuss that from there. Awesome. Keep your eyes and ears open. All right. So, anything further, Bernie? No, oh, I think that's that, that's all. That's it. Summing up, it's a it, they're good cars. They still get good mileage. They still have power. They're polluting a little more than we thought, but they've been polluting that way right from the day we bought the darn thing. So, um, you know, that hasn't changed. So, continue until they fix it. It's up to Volkswagen now, and. Um, if you need service on yours, the guys to go see are the guys at Pollock Automotive in Vancouver. You can reach them at pollockautomotive.com or give them a call to book your next appointment, 604-327-7112. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks, Mark. Talk to you soon. Bye.